Hi folks, Tom here with FrugalPreppers.com. Uh, a while back I did a review on the uh, Harbor Freight 5-in-1 uh, power pack. Um, I like this little guy um, a lot and uh, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars just because I really thought it needed a little bit more battery life on the inverter and I really felt like it should have come with a better charging system than it did. Um, now as far as charging goes, um, one of the things I told you is you can take the jumper cables out of the side and you can hook those jumper cables to your car battery and charge up your car battery or charge this off your car battery um, or you can hook those jumper cables to a 12 volt charger and charge it. Um, one of the things I did however realize is that these cigarette lighter plugs on the front, these are full time connected back to the battery um, so that you can use these um, uh, plugs here for cell phone chargers and stuff even when nothing else is turned on. But what that means however is um, you can build a charging socket um, to plug in between that socket and the cigarette lighter plug socket in your car. And then when you're driving around you simply plug this into your socket. It makes a rapid style charger. Now it comes with one that plugs into this small power port here. It takes 20 hours for that one to bring this to a full charge. Um, I've found that doing the cord will actually bring this to a charge in a much shorter amount of time. Um, and then you're able to, uh, you know, charge this in an hour or so and bring it to a nice full charge. Um, and so we're going to go through exactly how I made my cord and I'm going to make a second one. Alright, some of the things you're going to need for this project are going to be these ends. Um, now, I got these at the Electronic Surplus store. Um, you can find them at Batteries Plus, Radio Shack, probably a number of places, maybe even like AutoZone, Auto Parts stores. And they do make ones that are not the solder on type. These, however, are you solder a wire here, and you'll solder a wire here. Now, I like the solder on type because I like knowing I have a good, tight, soldered on connection. Um, they also have the kind that you put a fuse in side of it, too, which is not a bad idea to put a small fuse in there just in case you have a short. I didn't get those. I'm not going to worry about it because I'm not going to leave it plugged in anytime. I'm not right there with it. Um, the uh, other things I'm going to be using today is a butane soldering iron and electric soldering iron would work for fine too. And then I'm probably going to be using the butane torch for the bottom connection so I can get a lot of heat on there. If you don't have a butane torch, these you can buy this at Radio Shack for like $29. It comes with both tips. I keep two of them um, because I lost it once and bought another one. But now it actually works out handy. Uh, because I can keep my torch on one and my soldering iron on the other. Um, if you don't have a torch, you can go to Walmart, buy one of these little guys in the checkout lane for $3.97. And it is a little mini butane torch. Fills up on the back and you can adjust the flame height here. Um, also, can of butane. Uh, this you're going to need to refill. You want know, again buy this at Walmart, or you can buy a big can for just a little bit more at Walgreens. Okay, this is the cord that I'm going to be using. This is a 16 gauge lamp cord. I bought this at Home Depot many, many years ago, and I paid like 20 cents a foot for it. I'm sure the price has gone up since I bought it. Um, when I bought it, I think I bought like 300 feet of it just so that I'd have enough for projects for a long time to come. Um, one of the things you'll notice on this lamp cord is that one side is smooth and the other side has little ridges. This is so you can keep straight which is your positive and which is your negative. Some wires will have a little white stripe as well. Or if you get a cord that has a red and a black lead, that, that works really well too. Um, what I'll do is use the side that's my ridge side for my negative, and the bare side will be my positive.
but you want to make sure that your positive is the center tip your negative is going to be the outside tip and by all means be careful you do not want to uh, cross wire these or you'll end up with something that's smoking and catching on fire um, also it would be a good idea to get a multi-tester if you don't have one that has a continuity tester on it um, so that we can verify the connections that are center to center and negative to negative when you're done before you plug it in. So now what you're going to do is take your wire, you're going to you know, cut you off a nice length of it. You're going to want to split your wire like so. Then you're going to take your cigarette lighter plug apart on this, but they'll, they'll all wire up a little differently. Um, and some of them, like I said, are solder, some of them are solder free. I like the solder ones. And now I want to, this is going to seat in the back. I don't want my split wires hanging out past where my insulation is. So I'm actually going to strip this one off pretty close down here. I'm going to cut about yay much of it off. And then I'm just going to put my wire strippers on. Strip me off a nice little chunk of that. Like so. Okay. Now we'll have to twist those around like so. And what we're going to do is just take wrap it around here a couple of times. Twist it at the bottom. Like so. Okay, so now we're ready to solder that one. Um, I find that you can take a place strippers on here and you see like where this big crimp spot is, close it on that. It does a nice job holding it up there, get it ready to be soldered. I'll try to bend that forward a little so you can see here. So this is where we're going to use our butane torch. And what you want to simply do is light up your torch and turn the flame down about like so. You don't need a whole lot of flame at the beginning of this part. Get your solar ready. And now you're going to see that I'm heating up this part. I'm going to put just a little dab of flux on here. And now we're going to heat up the actual metal prong because what I want is for the heat to come into this and then heat up the wire to where it will accept solder and you'll start probably see this color of the solder change and see how the flames start to turn a little green right there it tells you that this is just about ready to accept some heat Now that you'll see this is kind of flaming when I touch it and that's just because this solder has flux in it as well and then what I'm really going to do is just really turn it up nice and hot here at the end and you actually see that that's starting to glow a little red yeah and now we really know that that prong was hot enough to take the solder good and that's basically all there is to solder in that part now we're going Real quick, this is how you uh, refill one of these. Put your cigarette far away. And you just push it down on this little nozzle. Wait a little while. Now on the butane soldering irons, you can kind of see the butane going in. On these you can't. But you feel the can gets a little bit lighter. Now, it won't light when you first do this. You have to let it sit for a little while and kind of warm back up because it gets cold. And <coughs> then you will uh, have a filled up torch lighter. Okay, this is relatively cool. 
not the third degree burn hot anyway. Um, so now we got to solder on a wire to this little tip right here. This will be a little easier to solder because it's kind of like a brass coppery type connection. And what we're going to need to figure out is exactly what length we want to solder that at. So what I'll do is slide our little pronger thing back in here and keep that wire straight. Slide this all down in here. Okay, and so we can see, you know, we can have a little extra. So we're probably going to snip this off about right here. There. And then uh, on this one, we just need to snip off a little bit on the ends. And for this, I'm just going to make this a little easier here and use my wire strippers. You can buy these little wire strippers with some extra connectors. They're crimpers, cutters, strippers. Uh, I got these at uh, uh, Walmart, and I think that was like six bucks. Get a little bit off right there. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then what we'll do is we'll pretend the wire, and we'll pretend this, and we'll just bend this wire at a little 90 degree angle, and it'll solder right in there. Um, so I'm going to fire up the soldering iron. Hopefully my lighter will light that. You'll see that's glowing red inside there. This is going to get real good and hot. I'm going to rub a little rosin flux on it here. And this is what's called tinning your soldering iron. And see how that kind of gets clean and silver, silverish looking on the end. And then I'll tin it with a little extra solder. Like so. And now I've got a nice thermally conductive tip. And I'll just take and put my wire right in there, put some heat on it. Might need to put a little flux on it there. And we'll see that we got that nice and coated now with, with some solder. Sometimes on little things it is actually easier to put flux on what you're soldering and put the solder on the tip of the iron. You just have to heat it up enough that you know you're getting a good solder contact or you get what's known as a cold solder joint which is where it sticks to the part but it's not electrically conductive and these butane irons you gotta be kinda careful with them because where those red ports are glowing putting quite a bit of heat out of there and if you get your finger too close it'll burn you. Okay now we got a nice little dimple the solder there that's hot on the bottom so watch out and now all we do is we just have to take and solder this part on here so now we'll take our wire here and we'll just touch this together until the whole thing kind of melts into one nice solid piece and hold that till it cools go so as you see now you have a good clean tight solder connections um, ow. <laughs> watch out that center post is hot <laughs> what I'll do is just kind of touch that to these side cuts and what this does is act as a heat sink and get some of that heat out of that center post for you Oops, uh, cool it down now I can touch it Okay. Now we'll put the whole thing together like so. And we now have this. We'll repeat this process on the other end. Okay, so now I have both ends completed. Now what we want to do is test to make sure that there's no shorts in it and that it is hooked up in the right polarity. Um, so what we're going to do is I keep 
some handy dandy little alligator clips right on my multimeter that are hooked up to some test leads and this makes things a little easier to, to, to test. Um, so uh, most multi-testers, I'll show you this here, will have what's called a continuity setting. All that does is when there is continuity, which continuity means there's a connection there electrically, the current will flow through it, it'll beep. If your meter doesn't, you can always put it on the ohm's resistance, and when you touch it, the uh, needle will move. Let me find the right spot there. And you see that the, the needle jumps up there. That's because there is connectivity there. The continuity meters are kind of nice, though, because you can just listen for the sound and know that it's okay. So we'll clip our red lead on here. And now I'll check for this one. You see there's continuity there. Now we'll clip our black, which is our outside ground, on here and make sure that we have continuity to here. We do. Now, the other important thing here is to test between the outside and the inside and make sure that there is no continuity, which would mean there was a short there. And you don't really, I guess, have to test both ends. I always do just to be sure. And there you have it. You have now uh, this end can go into your cigarette lighter plug. And the other end can go into your jack here. And now you'll be able to charge this rapidly while you're driving. Okay, so I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, there's, I think, some good you know, soldering tips in this video, and um, I think this plug can be very handy. Um, I've seen some guys that have built their own like solar generators that have cigarette lighter plugs, and, and they're great, and I think a plug like this comes in handy because uh, you would be able to charge your batteries um, while you're driving down the road um, with them in your car. Um, and not necessarily always have to hook them up to the solar panel to charge them and not have to use house electricity to charge them. If you're driving anyway and your motor's turning and spinning the alternator, you, know, you might as well use some of that energy for something. So please uh, click like and subscribe. And I always love to hear any comments that anyone has and any feedback. Thanks.